I ask this at every single intro class. What's the best way, the best tool, and the best use case to get started? Uh, so high level, my answer is always ChatGPT+, Plus, still the best option on the market, best value. Um, but the probably better answer is it depends on what you do for a living. <laughs> if you are a writer, if you are an advertising professional in creative or media buying, if you do analytics, if you do social media, if you do communications, it is to make a list of all the things you do. Like just take a spreadsheet and say, okay, this list out, these are the 20 things I do every month. And then say like, okay, create another column. How often do you do them? It's daily, weekly, monthly? How many hours a month are you spending on them? Um, you could put like a, in, like a, a joy column. Like how much do I enjoy this? Work? Like I hate this thing. I hate this report, but I do it 20 hours a month. Like just find the variables that will help you determine which task or tasks that you do would you most like an AI to help? And it could be because you don't like the task. It could be because you spend 50% of your month doing it and it's not fulfilling to you. Whatever the criteria is you determine, you just want to find the thing that's going to help you be better at what you do or enjoy what you do more. And so that's why I say it's, it's a very subjective thing. So when I talk about what is the most valuable tool, ChatGPT Plus is obvious for everyone. We love Descript. Like Descript is transformative to our marketing efforts. So that's a very valuable one for us because our podcast is a core part of our growth strategy. So again, it's stepping back and say, well, what are the things we're doing that matter? It's our intro to AI class, gets a ton of people in and helps a lot of people. Our podcast grows an audience in a way we never imagined possible. So like, if I could find ways to be better at those two things, that's really valuable to us. Um, so that's how I kind of think about it, is where are your resources going? where the campaigns, which things are helping you achieve your goals the most, or maybe are functioning below goal. Like we're not hitting this goal. So the best tool is going to be the one that helps you hit that goal because that's how you're compensated. So it's very personal, I think, which tools are best. Um, but at a high level, you know, there's some that we just think are great tools because that's the ones we use. And I say often a lot when we're talking about the podcast, because this is part of the presentation that I give, is I go through the whole podcast process and I say, you know, based on the things that I'm doing, let alone the things that Mike's doing with the, with the writing, the four, the three blog posts with all, on each of the topics is I know that I'm, that should take me 17 hours of my life to do that every single week, just me, not even Mike's part. And I'm doing it in two and a half or, you know, Claire's helping now, but I can take those 15 hours and I'm in Slack an hour every day talking to community members. I'm scheduling phone calls. I'm doing human things. I'm doing all these things. And that's what's important. That's what, that's what brings me the joy, right? So, and, and again, a lot of stuff with the podcast, I did not edit videos before using Descript. So it's teaching me a lot of things as well. So it's filling a knowledge gap and a skill gap that I didn't have. And now, I, and now I'm talking about being a video editor. Like that, who would have thought that was good? <laughs> Yeah, I think that's like our approach at the Institute is always when we think about a strategy or we think about the use of a tool, we say, how does it make things more intelligent? And how does it make it more human? So part of our plan very intentionally is to free Kathy up to do more interpersonal communication, like spend time with people, build relationships, hear from them. What is going on? What could we create a value for them? What courses would be helpful? And that's the AI, the AI is not going to do that. It's not going right. to build those relationships. And so if she can save 20 or 30 hours a month that she can rededicate to the community, great. Like that's the more human side. And so I think as you look at your strategy moving forward and you think about your use of AI tools, think about how do we become more intelligent as a marketing department or as a company and how do we become more human? And the more intelligent part is what frees you up to do the more human stuff. And quite honestly, the more human stuff that I'm doing is brings me the most joy, but is also driving revenue. No doubt. Yeah. And we can attribute that. We can look at it and say, okay, that's time well spent. But yeah, I think the first one is, like you said, it's, it just brings you more enjoyment. Like I, I'm a huge believer that AI should make us enjoy our work more. The stuff that we don't enjoy, the repetitive data-driven stuff that many of us don't really care for, we just do it because we have to. Maybe that's what the AI does. And we get to do the other stuff that's a little bit more fulfilling. Like I love strategy. I mean, I, I'm never happier in my job than when I can spend eight hours with no meetings, no calls, and I can just like stare at whiteboards and I can pencil things out on paper and I can just think. So I love plane rides sometimes. Like I just think uninterrupted. And so that to me is like joy. And if I can spend my time doing that kind of stuff, then, you know, I really love what I do. 
I don't love like, where's this report? Where's that report? Oh man, we're not even tracking this thing. Uh, we knew we should do, there's all these things we know we should do. We don't have the time to do it. I would love for AI to do all that stuff. Just surface things for me. Almost like that Apple journal. When I said at the beginning, I would love an Apple journal for our business. Just like it's seeing things, it's serving them. What's going on here? And you just like, I like, uh, maybe somebody should build that. Um, <laughs> Well, that speaking to me, of joy, talk yeah. about a little bit about, you know, people talk about Gen AI and writing blog posts and writing all these things for us. And most of our team, we don't use it for that. No, we don't. We don't. Yeah, I, I've said this often when I'll do like the intro class. I don't, I think like AI writing for you is like the least interesting thing it does. Um, because to me, writing is a critical part of thinking. And, and it's like how I analyze ideas. It's how I form my own thoughts and points of view on things. And if I just like let AI do it, then I can't stand behind it. Like I can't explain it to you. Um, I actually find this even with summarization. A lot of people like use it to just summarize stuff and then they just read the Cliff Notes version. If I'm going to talk about something like on our podcast each week, I read every single thing that we talk about. If I was just using AI to do summaries of each of those articles, I could never off the cuff just talk deeply about topics. Right. So I don't think we can shortcut like human knowledge. I don't think we can shortcut critical thinking and strategy. I think it's just there to assist us. It's, a, it's there to kind of enhance what we're capable of doing. Like maybe I can read another three research reports a week because of the AI, but it doesn't replace the fact that I'm still doing it. It can't go listen to podcasts for me. It can do a summary of the transcript, but it's not the same as investing the hour to like listen deeply and hear the inflection in someone's voice and be like, oh, Sam Altman, really means that like it's not words on paper it's like he was hurt by the fire like you can feel it in his voice and like AI doesn't get that stuff so there's things that are going to remain uniquely human and i think that's part of the path forward is figuring out what those are for you and figuring out what they are for the industry so i was on a i was being interviewed for an ebook a few weeks ago and the woman who was interviewing me was writing taking notes and i said do you want me to record this just so we can have a conversation and you can just transcribe it and that way you can have my quotes right. We can just have a conversation. You're not trying to talk and think and listen and write at the same time. And she was like, oh, that would actually be amazing. And just like things like that. Like what? A, and she sent it. She's like, this was the best interview I've done because I actually was able to focus on you and not trying to do a couple things at one time. So it's interesting. I still type my notes while it's happening, even if Zoom is transcribing it for me and sending me a summary, because I can't break from the fact that when I type it, I remember it. And like, I don't know. It's one of those things I can't get away from. Yet. Um, I literally, it's like every conversation I have, I still take notes on the conversations. And I, I do feel like putting it down in words is actually what puts it into my memory versus just rereading it. I don't know. That's an interesting one. Like I, I really thought about that, but I, I do use the Zoom companion, but I, I don't, I still take the notes. And even if I know there's three other people on our team on the call taking notes, I still take my own notes. You've probably noticed that. Like yeah, I, we all I do take it. notes for everything. <laughs> yeah, interesting. 